Living with nature sounds like a daunting and strenuous task, but it's really not. It can be as simple as getting a plant on your desk to creating a backyard full of life and biodiversity. In this video, I'm gonna go over some ways you can live closer to nature, but more importantly, why you should. Starting with plants, getting a potted plant in your home is a very easy and beneficial thing to do. Scientific studies have shown an increase in productivity from adding plants into people's places of work. For that alone, they make it a worthwhile addition to any home, but they also have the benefit to increase air quality as we all know. It doesn't take a green-thumbed person to take care of at least one plant. You can get one as simple as a cactus that you really don't have to water frequently, or something like a spider plant that is really easy to take care of and will rapidly reproduce for you. Whatever plant you choose, just be sure to do your research. I personally love owning plants because it's a very easy thing to do and it really can help build up some greenery in your home. As well as the productivity factor, it helps increase air quality and it's overall just a great thing to do. So I'd highly recommend anybody get a plant. Owning an animal is a very common thing to do. In fact, 66% of all U.S. households have at least one pet. This is because animals benefit people in a lot of different ways. They ease a sense of loneliness, reduce stress, anxiety, and even depression. They are said to help children develop social and emotional intelligence skills, so that's something to consider for your parents out there. In short, pets are great. However, it's extremely important to choose the right pet. For example, if you live in a small apartment, it's probably not best to get a dog, maybe go for a cat, hermit crabs, a lizard, or get a fish tank. Getting a pet is a big responsibility though, so do keep that in mind before you rush into getting a pet. Once again, do your research to make sure that your pet has a very happy, healthy life. It'll help you and it will help them in the long run. This crab wants you to like the video. Getting into fish, I'd highly recommend having an aquarium. After all, I am Fishman2114. Fish tanks are great in that you can have both pets and plants in a single space. I know aquariums can be a daunting thought for some people, but starting off with a small 5, 10, or 20 gallon tank is a great starting point. Be sure to do extensive research on whatever setup you plan on getting, especially with the fish you want. If you want a starting point, go for one centerpiece fish, a small midwater school, and then some bottom feeding fish. That'll give you a nice diverse setup. If you want some beginner friendly plants, try starting with Anubias, Duckweed, Lutea, and one of my favorites, Lacy Java Fern. If you add these, some driftwood, stone rocks, and all on a sand bedding, you'll have a great starting setup. Cleaning it also isn't too bad. Be sure to check out my video on aquarium maintenance above. Now, if you really want to start small and not bring any animals into your home, you could always bring the animals to your home. One of the easiest things you can do to achieve this is by having a bird feeder outside your window. Everybody loves birds, and attracting them to your house is another great stress reducer. If you want to take it a step further, you can even add a bird feeder that sticks onto your windows to get an even closer look. Bird houses and baths are another great option to have with your feeders, but if you really want to start small, like I said, go with the feeders. My favorite bird is the Northern Cardinal. Every time I see one at my feeder, it gives me a sense of accomplishment. Hopefully, it'll give you some as well. Bird feeders are great in that there really isn't too much maintenance. Occasional cleaning and obviously refilling of the seeds is pretty much all that's needed. Once again, you don't have to do anything inside your home and you can just watch nature from afar. Overall, I'd recommend having a bird feeder. If none of these sound like things you want to do, there are other things you could do. In fact, there's way too many even for this video. Some other things I'd suggest would be adding a native bee and bug home. These small little bee nesting homes give our native bees nesting space, and they really don't take up much space at all. Gardens are huge, even if you don't have an area for an outdoor garden. There are indoor alternatives, like my arrow garden here, but overall, you can do a lot and grow your own food as well. Finally, I'd suggest having a worm bin. 
I know that sounds crazy, but I'm serious. Worms can help cut down on your food waste. They'll eat things like banana peels, strawberry tops, and apple cores, and they'll produce a various byproducts that are amazing for your plants. These include vermicompost and worm tea. If you want a step-by-step -step video on how I made my Canadian nightcrawler bin, then be sure to check out this video above. Overall, any of these options are great and pretty easy to do. In conclusion, there's a lot of things you can do to live closer to nature, from getting a pet, a plant, a bird feeder, or even a worm bin. All these things reduce stress and lead to greater overall quality of life. If you want my recommendation on which of these to choose first, try getting a potted plant first. It's cheap, easy, and has the previously mentioned benefits. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's pretty different from my usual lineup of videos, but this is a topic I really wanted to talk about. Anyways, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.